This video is about how to measure AC current. On many hobby meters, like this one, there is no possibility to measure AC current. And um, in this video I want to show how you can make a simple circuit to do that. At first there is one way to measure uh, AC current and that's the same way uh, that we can use to measure DC current. We uh, connect a resistor in the circuit where we want to measure the current. This is our load. The current flows so this way. Also this way back because it's 50 Hz or so or 60 Hz. And there, when you uh, choose the right value for this resistor there is a voltage drop in parallel to that resistor. This also, this also has to do with the resistance of the load. But you can measure this voltage drop by means of an AC voltmeter. I tried this circuit, this circuit for um, high currents and I couldn't find many, couldn't find a big voltage difference. But this circuit is useful for, um, for instance, small AC currents. When the resistor here is relatively high, let's say 100 ohms or 50 or 1000 ohms, you will find a substantial voltage drop. Of course this also depends on the value from the load. It's a voltage divider. Um, the second way to do it is by means of a current transformer. And uh, the principles from this circuit are in fact very easy. This is the circuit. Here we connect our AC source. The current flows through the primary of a transformer to the load. And so back, of course, in also in the other direction, because it's 50 Hz or 60 Hz. And here we find on the secondary side of the transformer a certain voltage. And that voltage is proportional to the current that flows here. In fact we are measuring the induced AC voltage. This is a rectifier, a one fa phase rectifier, single wave rectifier. And parallel to this resistor and this small capacitor you will find here a DC voltage. So when you connect a micro amperimeter here or a micro voltmeter you will see the pointer of the meter move proportional to the current that flows here in the circuit. Here you see how I made this current transformer. In fact you can make it very easily yourself. Take a, an iron pin, an iron nail with a certain thickness, or uh, this thread when I say the right word, thread, and um, wind on it as primary coil, uh, for instance uh, 23 turns, from thick wire well isolated. That's your primary coil through which the AC current flows. Now you isolate it and after that um, wind your secondary coil. And in my case this bore were 400 turns from thin copper wire. And now we have a transformer. And when we send AC in this transformer a very small uh, voltage and current will be present on the secondary coil. And we can um, rectify it by means of this diode. And then we read here on the meter the, in fact, the, the microvolts that we measure. I want to demonstrate it now. Connect the, this is a halogen lamp transformer, 12 volt, 5 ampere. And now I connect the AC to the circuit. Um, as a load I use this battery of this uh, lamp bank. Here you see quite a few heavy halogen lamps and car lamps. There are 50 watts. So uh, it's a quite big load and a quite big current flows here through the primary. And here you see that the meter moves. You can also see the inrush current also important to know for certain circuits. 
you can see a peak of current. And now I connect um, another lamp. I shortcut one of the lamps and now there's a higher current. I will demonstrate it. Here you can see that the meter moves up. The pointer moves upward. And now we're going to a very high current. And you can see that the meter moves to show that there's a very high current. Of course you must align this and find a reference somewhere for this AC, but you can also calculate it on the basis of the on the basis of Ohm's law. So this is an easy way to make a current transformer. This transformer is specially usable for high currents, let's say up to 10 ampere or so. But you can also use, for instance, such a small wallward transformer. This is also usable. Connect your uh, the secondary side from the transformer in the primary circuit. So the the coil with the low ohms resistance must be in this circuit. And the other side of the transformer, the high voltage coil, connect it to the rectifier. Uh, you must be a little bit, take a little bit uh, care and caution with this uh, transformer because the voltages on the secondary side can get very high, up to 100 volts AC or 200 volts AC, when on the primary there is a, sub a substantial current and voltage. So be careful and uh, don't burn, burn your meter out. And that's also the reason why I made this current transformer myself. This works much better to wind it yourself on a, an iron nail. Don't take steel because it doesn't. Uh, it may not get uh, permanently permanently magnetized. So these are the issues. Not a too high secondary voltage. Your meter will burn out. The current in the primary is decisive for. Um, the voltage on the secondary, but of course there must also be a certain voltage drop, because when there is no voltage drop there will also be no voltage on the secondary side of the transformer. And the transformer must be loaded on the secondary side with a circuit. If not there will be no current. Uh, the isolation must be good from the primary to the secondary on higher voltages, that are all voltages above 60 volts and the circuit must be designed for a certain ampere range. These are two ways to connect a micro ampere meter. This is one way and this is the other way. Here the resistor is a series resistor and here you measure the more or less the voltage. This is a 300 volts silicon diode or a 1000 volt silicon diode that can handle approximately 3 ampere. They are very common. 